Okay, well, it's about mid-morning at the moment, and things are really hotting up around here. A lot of people have come in, and people who say that the games industry is on its last legs, I can only say they don't know what they're talking about. The only thing I do wonder is we're seeing a lot of games that are very much the same, and I'd certainly like to see some that showed a bit more creativity and engaged the imagination a bit more. So let's go and look for some. I'm not quite sure what we have here. It's... Uh, rather strange thing for a computer show. Michael Baxter, this is the comics game system. It doesn't look much like a computer to me. Well, it isn't actually a computer, although internally it is. But externally, instead of having a keyboard inside it, we have a, all sorts of frills, such as this light yoke or a steering wheel or a handlebar. So it's purely for playing games. And what about the chair that you're sitting in? It's, well, it's not the sort of thing most people would have in their living room. No, it's a completely new concept for the living room. But uh, this chair, um, it, it was to be synchronised with the game, so that when you move to the left, the chair moves to the left. When you move to the right, the chair moves to the right. If the, if the character you're moving on the screen moves up, the chair moves up or downwards, just like in the arcades. Very exciting. What sort of games is going, are going to be available on the system? a lot of games ranging from good old-fashioned shoot 'em up to a chess game. Okay Mike, so you're going to show us the basic multi-system are you? Uh, if we can get a go on it? Yes, well this is the uh, multi-system as it comes to its initial form. Initially we have a steering wheel. Uh, obviously this is very useful for racing uh, car games. The steering wheel flicks off like so. Uh, with a flick of a switch here. And you pull this down and you have a motorbike handlebar. So this is a very good for a motorbike or a jet ski type game. And another flick of this switch. And you pull this up. And you have a flight yoke. Up, down, left, right. Then coming with the motor system are these pedals. So if you're in a car, you've got brake, accelerator, or if you're in an aircraft, left or right uh, rudder. And you can still use it with an ordinary, boring old joystick if you want to. Yes, you can use it with a boring, ordinary joystick if you want to. Jonathan Cygnosis has been known for its great graphics and in Shadow of the Beast it looks like they're bigger and better than ever. Yeah, I think this is the ultimate Amiga product as far as we're concerned. Although we're always working on getting it even further. Big products. 2.4 megabytes of graphics, 900k of sound. I hope this is the start of big things to come for Cygnosis. What's the plot for this one? Plot? You're the, gu you're, you're the guy who's got to go through and actually kill the beast. You've got to gather weapons, keys, clues, the full works. I'm not going to say anymore, you've got to work it out for yourself. Andrew, I know that the software business is fairly, you know, sort of cut and thrust, but do you really need a black knight on your stand? Well, of course we do. We're having fun, we're enjoying ourselves. This is a great trade show. There's a huge number of people come to London every year just to see what's going on in the software industry, and we're entertaining them. That's what we're doing. Now, he's here promoting Onslaught. What's Absolutely right. Tell me about Onslaught. Well, it's a medieval battle game. Uh, you fight to retrieve ten kingdoms, and you're on knights, you're on horses, you're fighting all kinds of medieval armour, and you're enjoying yourself with your computer. You've got a new image as well now. 
We are Britain's longest established computer software company in the leisure area. Yes, we've got a new image, we've got a new style for the logo, we've got a knight to have on our stand, and we're enjoying ourselves. And is the Black Knight enjoying himself? Well, by now I feel like I've been in here for about three days, though it's still only the middle of the afternoon, so there's an awful lot to see here, there really is. Um, I don't know whether these three guys have seen anything they like. No, I think that's a no comment from him. Anyway, I'm going to see what else we can find. Bob, Atari seems to be going in for a, an awful lot of miniaturization, starting here with the portfolio. Absolutely. We believe that the next generation of computers are going to need to be very useful, very portable, and the best way to do that is to get something like this, and the 90s will see a tremendous amount of that product development. Now, the portfolio is a fully compatible miniature PC that you can slip into your pocket, isn't it? Absolutely. It's fully usable, and as well as being a fully compatible PC product, it has a lot of built-in software that everyone will find easy to use and useful. Now, what about the Stacy? That's the portable ST. Correct, but that's much bigger than this. And Stacy is largely aimed at people who want to move their computer from desk to desk, from operating position to operating position. It's not something that you're going to pull out of your pocket on a bus and use straight away. A lot of musicians use STs. Do you think they'll be buying Stacys to take on tour with them? The market reaction in the UK definitely supports that. I believe the first several thousand Stacy machines will be sold to the music market. And finally, you're letting us play um, games on the bus or on the train or whatever with the Lynx. That's a very exciting product. We're launching that in Europe any day now. It's going to the States first, and it's going to be a multi-million seller. And the games will come in sort of card form that you can plug in? Same kind as we're using on the portfolio over here, the very thin Roman RAM cards. You can, same size as the credit card, carry 10 or 12 with you in your wallet. What sort of games will be available? Um, I think that it's successful on a computer today. We'll be on the um, links, as we call it, tomorrow. Thanks very much, Bob. Hey, by the way, isn't that mine? Mark, here at Rainbow Arts, you've got a game which is a simulation of running an oil company. That's a rather odd simulation. I mean, how, how did that, you come by that? Oh, it's quite easy. I think most people enjoy watching Dallas and other soap operas like this really enjoyable and so we thought we're only watching play it so, so what what sort of kind of little JR and uh, with all affairs in the oil business being simulated what sort of different elements are there in the game oh, a lot of uh, the normal oil selling procedures you can drill you can buy oil if you sell oil if you have to have tanks you have to have an eye have, you should have an eye on the oil price and all that so there's a little bit more like having an agent uh, blowing up other tanks and uh, other people protecting you from illegal actions from other companies. So there are different targets, uh, being the biggest one, win all other companies, getting 80% of the market share, whatever you want and how much time you have. So a lot of, a lot of room for dirty tricks and things like that. Yeah, I think it makes it more interesting, more realistic. Yes. And now you've done the game, you don't feel you'd be making more money in the oil business than in software. Oh, I think it's a much harder business there. Thanks. Gary, Gary Bracey from Ocean, you've been signing up all the heroes, I see. Well, we had uh, major success with Robocop. That uh, instigated the acquisition of things like Batman, The Untouchables, and next year we've got uh, Nightbreed, the Clive Barker movie. Must be very excited as getting the game of Batman, the movie. Oh, yes, I think that's uh, the Star Wars of the decade, really. Uh, we made a good game of it as well. Can we take a look at that? Yeah, certainly. Come upstairs and I'll show you. It's a bit quieter up here, Gary. Obviously, the star performer for Ocean has to be Batman. Could you tell me how you turned the, the greatest movie of the year into a game? Into the greatest computer game of the year? Yes, uh, it takes uh, the form of five different levels. The first one you can see at the moment, uh, which takes place in the Axis Chemical Factory. Then we have the Batmobile section, where you turn corners shooting out a rope. Um, then followed by a Batcave section, a Batwing section, and finally in the... Gotham Cathedral, the final confrontation with the Joker. Uh, it's been pretty well reviewed and we're rather proud of it. I'm not surprised, looks great, thanks. 
Well, that's it. One day at the PC show, and I certainly feel exhausted. There's been a lot of good things to see, and we've only been able to show you some of them. However, there is one more thing. Tonight, US Gold is having a party, and all in the interest of journalism, we'll be there. See you. Blaze, 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 fire, got four. There he is, there he is, get ready, get ready. Ooh, I got him. There's Burning Hulk, there's a guy trying to get through, he's gonna try to get through, get through. We're all old dirt breath. We got him. Ken, what have you seen at the show today that you've liked? I, one real difference I've seen in the show this year, as opposed to other years, is previously, you'd, you'd actually see stuff that you'd never seen before. Things would actually be launched in the show, but this time, thanks guys. But this time, everything I've seen already. You think that you think the industry is maybe getting a bit slower? Though? It's certainly contracted, though, I think. Yeah, certainly. Right. Anything? Any products you'd like? Um. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> right, thanks. Don't mention any song, though. And this is how the computer industry enjoys itself. When it's not producing the software for you to play or the hottest hardware. And that's what I intend to do now. Enjoy myself. This is John Minson from London. <laughs>